And now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys. Hey. Aloha, Tony. How's it going? Hey everybody. I'm all righty. Um, so before we get into the news, um, if you're watching the show and football, I advise that you shut down the TV with football and you pay attention to the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, three one. It's yeah. Uh, I'm watching it. I have it behind it. <laughs> I'm or you can do both. You yeah, just have both. it on mute and then just be live on the show. You can all do everything at the same time. All right, you let's get the, the news segment going. Yep, let's get Wanna into share it. Your nice. Um. If you're watching on Twitter Spaces, you can hop on on YouTube if you want to see the visuals, or you can just um, you can just listen to the news. That's fine as well. If you're looking for uh, the links, we will provide that as well. Um, we're working on something different now, so that um, it's going to be easier for you to access access the links. Um, but we are not going to announce that now because we're working on it. But other than that, let's get into this week's news. Uh, I, would I would also like to thank everybody that gave me links for this week because it's so hard to uh, keep an eye on everything that is happening because there's so many things going on. So people at me and they give me links and I say, hey, look into this. And um, some stuff make it, make it into the news. So that's um, that's very good. Now, let's talk about um, Kick Wallet and XMR because you can now buy XMR with credit debit card um on monero.com and let's go on to the website so we can uh so i can show you so you can exchange crypto bitcoin to monero monero to bitcoin or you can actually go and buy slash sell crypto and you can buy 1500 uh, euro per day worth of monero or um 15 000 per month that is the cap currently and yeah, so if you do choose to uh, use KYC and get it um, this way, it's not optimal, of course, but it's another option that people have now. So you can use a card, enter your details, put your ID, and then you can you can purchase Monero. And as of now, you can buy it in 40 states. New York is not one of them. Of course. <laughs> of course, it's not one of them, um, but it's in Europe. It's in a lot of places. It's not in Afghanistan, Crimea, Cuba. It's not in Russia as of yet. Belarus, Ukraine, China, uh, but more and more places will will be covered. So it's not optimal, but if you do choose to have to use this option, you can. You can do that now. So um, I think that that's cool. If you don't want to use Kraken, you can just go there and more on ramps, this. the better. Yeah, the more the better. Exactly, the more the better. And um, also, before we move on, if you guys want to comment on anything, you can leave a comment on Twitter Spaces or on YouTube. And I'm, I'm paying attention to both. I'm trying to. And then after the news, what we'll do is that we'll go over um, what I talked. And then maybe if someone can uh, talk more about specific subjects because they're very um, um, particular. And I, of course, I can't know everything i can cover everything so if someone specializes in whatever i'm going to discuss please hop on after and and uh, let's discuss it but uh, now let's talk about the next thing that i have uh, which is a monero betting website it's called monero.win it's back and if you you can bet on the last digit of the next block hash and win uh monero it's a 100 percent fair game since 2000, 2018 and you can now play again, and hopefully you'll win. So if you do choose to, to do that, go ahead. Have you tried that? No, I've, I, no, I've never. I've never. Have you? Yeah, I have not. No. I kind of wish we played the lottery that one day. We would have, <laughs> if we would have won all that money, <laughs> God. I never thought it would have been in Burj Khalifa or something. Um, but then let's talk about actually MoneroCon. So we talked about MoneroTopia. Guys, buy your tickets, show up. It's in six months. It's only six months away. We've officially hit the six months mark. And we are posting more and more uh, speakers as we go and more and more details. So pay attention to that. But let's talk about MoneroCon as well. MoneroCon in 2023. Uh, they open a CSS proposal and they talk about location. Well, they, they're detailing it in, in the CSS proposal and um, different locations like Prague and the costs, uh, Lisbon, Denver, um, so all kinds of locations. So 
it's in the works and they're detailing all the prices and the amount of funding that, that they need and um, the sponsorship, how much money they need for, from the sponsors. So yeah, that's, um, that's important to, to note the distinction, right? So they, they do CCS, they, they, you know, get funding to do the conference from the community. Mm -hmm. In Aerotopia, we, we don't do funding. We, we more, we're more based on the sponsorships. So it's uh, a little bit different, different uh, way of going about it, but I think it's good. It's good to have these kind of two versions of conference taking place. Mm -hmm. And the, the way we do, I mean, it, Sunita and I, because it's really just us running it at the end of the day, obviously we, we always look to get feedback from the community. That's why we're constantly talking about the issues out in the open, being transparent as possible. That's how we ended up in Mexico City to begin with, right? <laughs> we put a poll up, people said Mexico City, <laughs> Mexico City it was. But at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're the ones steering the ship. So it allows us to, you know, move fast, pivot. Uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting because it's two different ways of going about it. And mm -hmm. then without using the CCS funding, we're a little bit more at the end of the day, we, we can make these decisions without having to feel like, uh, you know, we, we owe the community in terms of which way we, we move. So it's mm -hmm. interesting, uh, difference there between the two conferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same. Uh, it's interesting, but um, you guys went there, and uh, it was a lot of fun, from what I've seen. Oh, my God. oh yeah, oh, we had a blast. Yeah, I will be at Probably every Monero con ever. It was, it was very nice. Uh, really cool. You know, and it, it always ends up, you know, I'm sure different people go to go to each, uh, usually because of you know location and time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I've seen people tweet that um, they were kind of feeling the the. Um, the Bitcoin vibes from like the conference vibes from Bitcoin in 2013, 2014, where it was all about really the cyberpunk, you know, uh, ethos. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, beautiful location. So I'm really curious where uh, they're going to host the conference next year. Um, so go ahead and, and um, look over the CSS proposal and um, yeah, participate. <laughs> Awesome. Now let's go on to um gonna open the link over here. I'm not gonna play it. Um but essentially it presents this unique opportunity. Oops, one um, second. Okay. Uh, Justin Berman's video on uh Seraphis and Jenkins has been uh uploaded. So if you do want to check that out, I'm just going to reference it. I'm not gonna play it because it's very long. Um so go ahead, listen to it. It just got released. And it's really interesting. He actually came on Monero Talk. So if you don't want to to check out uh, Doug's conversation with him, uh, please do, because it was very interesting. So yeah, that was super cool. And then we did the Q and Q and A, &A yeah. with the, the live mm -hmm. audience on Twitter. That was awesome. We had some good questions there. Yeah, that's next level. It's really cool. It's really the Twitter spaces and, and the guests is awesome because you get to talk to the guests and then people actually get to ask questions at the end. It's really interactive. It's it's really awesome. I like this idea. Um, well, let's move on and let's talk about uh, Telegram because they are building crypto wallets and a decentralized exchange. And um, um, if someone can hop on after and maybe discuss this, because I'm not sure what to think of it, uh, but it's interesting. So the messaging app is pushing ahead with its build out of crypto infrastructure. Wow. And yeah, but I think that kind of surprised me is the emphasis on um, decentralization, non-custodial wallets that could reach millions of users. Um, and awesome. Telegram is already a go-to messaging app for many crypto traders, uh, giving it a captive audience from the start. So yeah, it's I'm, I'm curious of, of, of what's going to um, happen with this and how it's going to turn out because Again, are they, are they talking about what uh, cryptos they're going to support? What, what wallets? Mm, I haven't seen anything on that. Okay. I think it's in early, early, early stages. Interesting. Uh, but it says I have a quote over here. Actually, let's um, read the above as well. In a message on his personal channel, Durov contrasts Telegram's effort with the excessive centralization of failed crypto exchange FTX. Cryptocurrency users should switch to trustless transactions and self-hosted wallets that don't rely on any single third party. So um, the goal is uh, decentralization, non-custodial wallets, self-custody. 
Um, yeah, so let, let's see. I'm really curious. I don't have anything. The company will build a decentralized exchange and non-custodial wallets. Yeah, that's 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 really cool, man. That's actually it's huge. Uh, let's hope that that's what it's gonna be. You know. <laughs> wow. Let's let's hope. So if anybody knows so anything, get ready for Telegram coin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. One caveat. Uh, is it gonna be private? Mm? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but let's, he, get he him, let's get him to Monero Topi. Let's hear. Let's hear about Telegram Coin at uh, Monero Topi. Just kidding, guys. Uh, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah. uh, honestly, why not? Maybe. Um, but he, you did talk with Body about um, some other privacy coins, and he mentioned Dero. And uh, but I actually want to talk about Secret Network. Uh, because Stefan van Schaik, wait, there, someone said there's a Telegram coin called T-O-N, TAN. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I don't have much detail on that. But if someone does have, please hop on after. Um, and I'll do my research as well. Uh, interesting. But um, Stefan van Schaik tweeted, our survey of SG SGX attacks is out. Come learn about how SGX fails in real life. Check out our website, sgx.fail, including attacks on secret network. Now, if we open the link, I want to show you a couple of things. Um, so they essentially successfully attacked the secret network. And um, so the secret network has been vulnerable to the XAPIC and MMIO vulnerabilities that were publicly disclosed on August 9th, 2022. These vulnerabilities could be used to extract the consensus seed, a master decryption key for the private transactions on the secret network. Oof, okay. Um, exposure of the consensus seed would enable the complete retroactive uh, disclosure of all secret for private transactions since the chain began. And then we have above, they also mentioned that we urge privacy conscious users to reevaluate the risk, considering that their past transactions may be exposed. And yeah, I mean, this This is exactly what we're talking about, right? So Secret Network is, you know, perfect example of a project. I think we even were talking to them last, last year about having them come to Monerotopia or whatever. Mm -hmm. in May. Yeah. Um, and they did it, but they could have very well have come, you know, and, and talked about what they're doing there. And then here we are, you know, six months later and they have, you know, kind of a, a major failure in terms of uh, their privacy. So... This, that's what I'm talking about, right? So it's it's interesting to to look at these projects in terms of what they're trying to do in theory. Uh, but remember, there there's much more to this than um, you know uh, these than 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 ideas, right? It's about implementation. Mm -hmm. It's about standing the test of time. It's about having uh, you know a large network of intelligent devs that are constantly looking at the project. Um, so, you know, take these things into account. Here's just another perfect example of it. Uh, secret network, not panning mm -hmm. out to be what it originally intended to be. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure how, what they're going to do to recover from this. And, but, um, if you actually open, there's a document at the end of the, um, at the bottom of the website called sgx.fail. If you look on, on the file on page three, we have, um, some in detailed, we breached the privacy guarantees of the secret network, allowing us to recover the internal state of secret secret smart contracts and any digital assets in them. Um, so that's that's concerning, and um, of course, it's good to see many privacy protocols and enhancing tools. But I guess it depends on. I don't. Know, I feel like whenever you advertise utmost privacy you are responsible for a person's life in a way because they might absolutely trust whatever you build to protect them against whatever it may be you know mm -hmm. so i think it's you know we shouldn't take the privacy words so lightly i think it's very important because if you really advertise privacy um you should really you should think that my product should protect this person's life, you know? And I mean, I, I think I, mean, I would trust Monero if, you know, God forbid something happens, um, you know, the governments are after me or whatever. Um, I think 
I would trust it with um, it protecting my my assets. Um, I, I would I would trust that. But anything else, as of now, I'm not sure. But I'm not sure how they're going to recover it. Again, if if anybody knows more, uh, please hop on. Please do, and um, and let's discuss. Later, later, later. Yeah, hop on Twitter Spaces again because it's <laughs> it's hard to know the details of all this stuff, you know. So. Uh, please do hop on um, after the news section and let's discuss. Uh, but that, with that being said, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, centralized exchanges. Uh, JP Morgan said that centralized exchanges will continue to dominate crypto. And uh, this article talks about um, traders and how centralized exchanges are, are still a better option and how most of the people opt for, for them and how um the recent collapses of centralized exchanges like FTX have made people more aware of DEXs and may uh, make them want to use them more. Uh, but then they detail the, the cons of DeFi as well. Um, one of them being, uh, says over here, moreover, DeFi is still at greater risk of hacks and exploits. Chain analysis estimates combined losses of 3 billion across DeFi in 2022. Uh, DeFi protocols also still have some functional disadvantages, including over uh, cauterization and a lack of stop loss functionality. Um, so, and then it says that traders still choose CEX despite risks. A study by Consensus uh, shows that 99% of crypto traders still go through centralized exchanges. Most traders still choose to deal with them and their accompanying counterparty risks. Um, also, I want to mention one more thing. Moreover, the transparency of transactions on a DeFi protocol is also an issue for traders. <laughs> traders don't want the full record of their trading strategy to be available on the blockchain. Like they shouldn't. That, that shouldn't be a thing. So um, it's a really good concern and it's a really good point. And um, and I mean, more and more uh, CXs will collapse. And even, I think that's my next article that I have. Yeah, even BlackRock, the, so the CEO of BlackRock mentioned this as well. Most crypto firms will fail in wake of uh, the FTX collapse. It's important to build a very good DEX and one that respects your your privacy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess in, for now, uh, yeah, a lot more us users will use the CEXs, even though um, these kind of collapses, major collapses, occur occurred. And I've seen I've seen a title in which um, it said something along the lines that um, SBF said that um, he miscalculated eight billion dollars. <laughs> you can miscalculate a hundred dollars. You can miscalculate, um, you know. I guess a thousand from a large number, but the eight billion, that's a large number to you know, just, but I'm not going to cover anything on, on, I'm not going to cover much on Sam because it's just like, it's so much to talk about. And, you know, there's, yeah, I would much rather talk about different things for now. Um, but BlackRock's uh, chief executive believes that the collapse of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, in which the asset manager uh, was an investor isn't the end of the breakdown in the crypto space according to news reports i actually believe most of the companies are not going to be around and it's true most most of them are, are not going to be around and i think i think yeah no i think that's it, all that i wanted to mention from this article so uh, for now cx is i guess are more used than dexes but hopefully in the future more people you will, will use um dexes um now i want to talk about um uh, crypto miners in russia and that they capitalize on the bear market by hoarding ASIC devices uh, because electricity is very cheap. And um, even though most of Europe is suffering due to due to um, the electricity uh, prices, Russia is doing very well. And electricity, electricity is very cheap so that they can actually mine more. And I've seen a large um, surge in uh, local demand for mining hardware in quarter three of 2022. And it says over here, local dealer Chilkoot reported its ASIC sales in November and October exceeded its entire sales made in quarter three. Over the past nine months, the distributor reportedly sold 65% more hardware than in 2021. Um, and then we also have 
uh, we are working with legal entities and we see that they begin to buy 30% more equipment in one transaction than at the beginning of the year. And if we're looking at the costs of electricity, it's $0.07 per one kilowatt um, hour, which is very cheap. So people buy ASICs and, and they mine Bitcoin and it's essentially profitable for them. Um, but if you're watching, you should probably look into Monero as well. It doesn't require an ASIC. It uh, just requires requires a CPU, so maybe buy some CPUs as well and mine some <laughs> mine some Monero. Now I want to talk about um, Italy and it's and uh, it imposing a twenty six percent capital gains tax on crypto profits in twenty twenty three. Now um, Italy and and Portugal um, didn't really have any taxes on crypto. But as of 2023, they're going to. And uh, it says the 26% capital gains tax will be imposed on cryptocurrency trading profits larger than 2,000 euros. Um, Italy is plan planning to tighten regulations on digital currencies in 2023 by expanding its tax laws to include cryptocurrency trading, according to budget documentation released on December 1st. Um, and then it says that according to Tribe A data, 2.3 of the Italian population, which equates to about roughly 1.3 million people, own crypto assets. And Italy appears to be following in Portugal's footsteps. In October, Portugal, once known as a cryptocurrency tax haven, and a lot of people wanted to <laughs> actually move to, to Portugal for this reason, for the tax haven in crypto. Uh, but now they're proposing a 28% tax on capital gains as well, uh, starting in 2023. So if you were, if you are looking to move to Italy or Portugal based on the tax haven reason, maybe <laughs> you should reevaluate your decision. <laughs> and actually, since we're talking about Italy, I'm going to talk about Georgia Meloni. And what I want to talk about is the fact that she said that cash cash must be king. Uh, Georgia Meloni tells shoppers, Italy is to use more cash and fewer credit cards bucking a global trend towards electronic currency after Giorgia Meloni, the prime minister, dismissed card payments as private money. Meloni, who was elected in September, is finalizing her first budget, which is due to include a rule allowing shopkeepers and businesses to refuse cards and demand cash for payments up to $60. The rule would raise the current limit of 30 euros. I mean, 60 euros, not dollars, sorry. Um, the rule would raise the current limit of 30 euros and includes permission to sell and buy goods worth up to 5,000 euros in cash. Um, previously, it was 1,000 euros. So um, it's an uplifting news from Georgia Meloni. Now, I'm going to mention quickly Crypto Post. Is, uh, crypto Post, yeah. Um, you can buy and print shipping labels in crypto. And I'm pretty sure that I got it from the Monero subreddit so that you can actually pay for labels in Monero. So if you're looking for DHL or USPS uh, labels, you can purchase them in Monero. You put in all, all your details and, and you buy it. So I thought this was really cool. Um, let's move on. I got a couple more things, guys, uh, that I'll, I'll quickly touch upon. And then we'll move on to the next section. But um, I want to talk about Switzerland and the electric vehicle ban to avoid blackouts. So they wanted to, they wanted us to uh, buy electric vehicles so that we wouldn't use as much fuel anymore. And now they don't want us to use the electric vehicles, <laughs> um, which is funny. So Switzerland could limit the use of electric vehicles in cases of electricity supply shortages this winter under a new four-step plan to prevent power cuts and uh, blackouts. Now, driving EVs could be banned in Switzerland unless in cases of absolute necessary journeys in stage three of the power conservation plans. The country also plans a stricter speed limit on highways in the recent, recently proposed action plan, which has yet to be adopted. Um, this is because they typically import electricity from France and Germany to meet all uh, their power demand. This year's, this year's supply uh, from its neighbors is <laughs> constrained. Um, so 
I do think that this is going to uh, to be passed, and um, it just shows that no matter what they tell you to do, you'll eventually do that, and then they'll take it away from you somehow as well. Um, so yeah, I thought this this was interesting and concerning at the same time. Now, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but um, the Twitter files have been released. They talk about uh, Hunter Biden's laptop and how Twitter suppressed the story. So I find I find it um, really interesting the fact that Elon Musk is now exposing all the things that Twitter has been suppressing all this time and their influence over politics. So if you want to check it out, go to Matt uh, T A I B B I. Matt Taibi, and you can check out the Twitter files. We also have the links for you, so you can check it out later and read that for yourself. But it's a, it's a long thread, and um, yeah, it's um, it's really really concerning that um, they did what they did. I'll just mention one actually. Uh, for example, uh, Biden's team would just um, give some links to Twitter, and then they would say, "Oh, more to review from the Biden team," and then they would put some links. And then Twitter reply with handle these. <laughs> so it goes beyond Hunter Biden. It goes to other stories that they suppressed. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it basically just showed the relationship between you know Silicon Valley tech uh, and the powers that be. Uh, you know, whoever was con controlling the the government at at that time and how they were basically uh, using. Con you know their influence and their relationships with silicon valley tech to um, achieve whatever agenda it is they wanted to achieve uh, so mm -hmm. kind of uh corruption at, at its at its highest level uh, mm -hmm. you know and and certainly deteriorating uh the democratic republic that we live in um not mm -hmm. allowing especially for when we talk about you know platforms like twitter that are supposed to be you know the 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 uh the digital town squares of our time uh and they they weren't uh, acting in that way and it appears like elon is pushing us in in the right direction uh you know what whatever you may think about him or whatever i mean the the fact is uh he is i doing uh very very brave and uh a, a, taking extreme action towards uh moving twitter in the direction of being a pure uh, free speech uh platform uh and uh, i think i think it's i think it's an interesting experiment mm -hmm. i think ultimately we we're gonna need to see some kind of decentralized uh replacement because uh you know i think even elon is gonna run into issues because at the end of the day it is it is a centralized company uh, mm -hmm. where decisions have have to be made and there's always room for for influence uh but i think it's it's interesting to watch him attempt to move twitter in the direction of being more uh truly a free speech platform mm -hmm. yeah and uh some people said that um tim cook the ceo of apple would um the platform or take down uh, twitter from the app store and then um, elon musk and tim cook actually met in real life and they discussed it and they're not going to do that but if anything happens elon musk said that he'll build his own phone and then you'll be able to access the Twitter app from. I mean, that's that's just amazing, right? So it's it's. Yeah. I, th I think these are all all good things for for technology. Um, I mean, how amazing would that be if we had you know a, another a major uh, tech company competing in the space of of phones? Right, more competition is good, and the hope is that the competition would be around creating uh, a product that is. Uh, essentially, you know, more open source in nature, right? Because I think people are waking up to the fact that there's issues with these walled gardens. It's becoming very real for people. It's not just, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just uh, people like us talking about why these are issues, but it's it's starting to hit home with the mainstream, them understanding the repercussions of these large tech companies having all this power and authority over these centralized uh, businesses that greatly influence our society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good good points. Oh. And, and I'm sure we'll start talking about Monero soon enough, right? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> that should happen, honestly. Um, but I was 
I was uh, reading on YouTube, someone mentioned, uh, uh, but what is this idea that Elon wants to put um, in our head the chips? Okay, so um, what's this idea about uh, Elon Musk trying to put chips in people's heads? And I do actually have um, a link for that, but let, let's just go over one more thing and then we'll discuss that thing exactly. And then that'll be in the end of the news. This is uh, what I want to show you guys is an ATM at Art Basel which puts your bank account balances and a photo on a leader leaderboard for all to see. Now, essentially, and uh, you're not going to be able to, to see this on Twitter Spaces, but essentially it's an ATM and um, you stay in front of it. It's going to take a picture of you and then it assigns like a random um, balance. I think that's that's what it does, essentially. It's not the real balance, but, you know, and then you can see... No, I think it was people's real balance. You think? I don't think so. Yeah. That's you think so? Yeah. Put your bank account balance watch this. on the leaderboards, and it'll rank you among other Art Basel guests to see who has the most money currently. Number. If that's true, I mean, I guess people did it. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I, I don't know, but you know, number one was two point nine million dollars, and this guy, uh, this guy's picture was taken by the ATM, and it was displayed on on the leaderboard. Ranking from the the richest to to the poorest, um, but this is essentially what all the cryptocurrencies are. This is essentially what Bitcoin is. It's allowing you to see how much money someone ha someone has. Um, so, yeah, I I hope that some people found this concerning <laughs> because it is concerning. It's Sorry. it's nice to see that uh, you know artists are, are are picking up on this right and starting mm -hmm. to um e express these dystopian ideas this is how this is how we in you know the mainstream becomes informed mm -hmm. oh for sure plus it's so visual that you you can't you know you, it's it's it was really cool um it's now, the most concerning part is people just go along with it. They're like, oh, great. This is great. <laughs> you know, yeah, I love the fact that I can <laughs> show my balance. We're like, no, you're not supposed to want to yeah, enjoy no. doing that. No, it's horrible. I mean, that, that's what we're up against. You know, they're just, they're just, yeah. my minds have to, have to change overall. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, well, that's going to take a long time. I mean, some people say they have nothing to hide. So we're battling against against that as well. Right. Um, but the last thing that I want to talk about is, and then hopefully when we hop on um, after the guest on Twitter spaces, we'll discuss some stuff from the news if you guys want to talk about it. Um, do you guys like the Neuralink? What do you think about it? So essentially, Elon Musk said that the Neuralink will make the blind see and the handicapped walk again. <laughs> and besides that, it's going to be able to um, stream music into your brain so i guess you can have the monerotopia show straight into your brain <laughs> and you can listen to, to that anywhere with no headphones um <laughs> but yeah i'm not sure what to buy um, the, the thing is that and it's gonna be my, my last point um the thing is that do you want this in your brain and you might say no but in in a way in a, in a couple of decades you're gonna be essentially like, like a chimp because all your colleagues are going to download information at terabytes per second. And I guess there'll, there'll be a way to assimilate that information as well. So you'll just beat the chimp against all your friends that speak like 20 languages that they just downloaded and they have all the history from the entire world in, in their brain because they just downloaded at lunch. Yeah, it's, it's the story as old as time technology, right? So you could you could sit you could sit out, sit it out, and let others participate because you don't want the, you know, to participate in the the effects of technology that make us less human. But then you're no longer participating and competing in in, in traditional societies. So that's why it seems like we're kind of doomed, guys. Essentially, uh, we could all sit here and say this is you know realizing what this can lead to. But uh, like Tony's saying, are you are you going to sit on the sidelines when everybody else is using this uh, to their advantage? Uh, if it becomes that scary stuff, scary it, stuff. <laughs> it's yeah. He said that it's it's ready for for humans. It just needs to pass some mm. FDA approvals and it's ready to go. They he put it on monkeys and they were telepathically typing 
on the keyboard. <laughs> um, so um, I'm not sure. Well, Please, guys. Like leapfrog humans. Maybe, uh, you know, if they start using it first. Yeah, yeah, that's that's insane. That's absolutely insane. I mean, because people can hack this stuff. So what? I mean, people will hack into your neural link and they'll just force you to listen to the feds all day or, you know, or you have, you're going to wake up and you're going to have the government chant into your ears when you wake up for the first 10 minutes. Or yeah. surveillance in its worst possible form, right? We're concerned about transactions. I mean, imagine if your every thought is completely yeah. surveilled and tracked. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, like at least when we had communism and all these things at, at the worst times when you're in the in jail, whatever, at least you have your own thoughts, you know, like you can think your own things. You can not verbalize it, but you can think about it with this thing. You're like, you're done. I, I don't know. So uh, please, guys, like if you have any input, <laughs> if some of you like it, please let me know why. What do you think about it? Um, all in all, this was this week's news section. Um, we're going to conclude it. We're going to have the guest uh, next up. So we have all the links. Um, please hop on after the guest. Let's discuss some of the things that we talked about today. And um, other than that, um, we'll see you next time with the news. Thank you. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank Tony, you, thank Tony. You so much. You're the mom. You're the mom. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all the mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Tony. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.